YouTube ARG here and welcome back to yet another Topic Wap video. Today I have a very special video for you all. Okay, so if you've been a long time viewer of the channel, you may remember a couple of videos I made about something called McTreasure Island. And I promised for the longest time I would come out with a sequel to it. Well, I have some very bad news. This is in fact not a sequel to it. Instead of this being a sequel, this is more going to be a revisiting of it. As back in the day, my quality, my editing wasn't the best. Okay, I know you guys want to know what the deal with the whole entire pirate getup is. Well, you see, the sea called me one day and I just had to wear this. Okay, so what exactly is McTreasure Island? It was released in 1990 and it's basically just a McDonald's version of Treasure Island. This is one of the weirdest branded films I think I've ever seen. Okay, so how does the story go? All right, so this movie starts off with Ronald McDonald kind of just minding his own business, walking with Grimace, and then he starts to pull out some magic stuff. Are you gonna pull a coin out of the hat? <laughs> I sure am, Grimace, but not this one. Now, the thing I don't understand, how many jobs does he have? First, he's a burger salesman, then he's a clown, and now he's a magician? And then out of nowhere, the Hamburglar says, Robble, Robble. This one. Robble, Robble. He says this like 20 times throughout the movie. Uh, how'd you do that, Ronald? <laughs> it's a snap, Grimace. See? Gee. <laughs> you should have gone for the head. Okay, so it's been pretty chill so far, right? But then, Birdie, literally the worst character to exist ever, comes flying through the sky and causes pure chaos. Yo! Uh, heads up! Uh, I mean down, Hamburglar! Oh, uh, I got you, Birdie! Oof. No, I got you! Gosh, Mr. Oak, thanks for going out on a limb to rescue me! <laughs> <laughs> now after this, Ronald starts playing the flute. This will be important literally at the very end of the movie. But that's not all the magic I have up my sleeve. Rubble, rubble. Now it's at this point that Grimace just dies. Like, actually. Uh, I jumped rope before, but I never jumped scarves. You see him going down that hill, he, he's actually dead. Oh. Okay, now obviously Grimace didn't die, but I do wish he did. Uh, sorry, sir. Are you okay? Aye, matey. <laughs> no harm done. Salty Jack's been through a lot worse. Okay, so in my notes for this guy, literally all I wrote was weird man, weird laugh. <laughs> I've sailed the seven seas to bring him to him, but he wasn't at the McDonald Land dock. If you want, we'd be happy to look after these books until he gets back. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that, mate. Look after him. But whatever you do, mateys, don't look into him. At least not until the captain arrives. All right, so they get these books and the old man's like, oh man, y y you better not look into them. They're gonna look into them, obviously. Magic storybooks need special handling. Magic, Magic storybooks? Story They're gonna ignore that as well. Okay, now we need to talk about something. The tree in this, get, get this, is literally a cannibal. Watch this. Why, I'll be happy to store these books in my trunk, Ronald. <laughs> you know what books are made out of? Paper. You know what paper's made out of? Trees, I think. I'm gonna give you an example of why you're supposed to hate Birdie. Hmm, this looks like an interesting one. Treasure Island. It's a little dusty, though. Here, Mr. Oak, let me give it a good feather dusting before you put it away. <laughs> uh, I've got it. <clears throat> it got me. Do you finally see the frustration? What happens next is very shocking. The Hamburglar dies. Rubble, rubble. Rubble. Now the weird thing is Ronald McDonald's concerned about this, but he's literally costing his company money. 
because he steals their burgers. The important thing now is that our friend's in trouble and we've got to help him. Rabble, rabble. Hang on, Hamburglar, we're coming. So I quickly reached into my bag of magic tricks and luckily I had brought my umbrella. Hang on tight! My friends and I were falling into the biggest adventure of our lives, right into the pages of... Whoa! Treasure Island. Okay, so they all go into the book. I'm sorry I keep on doing this to you guys, Hamburglar does not die, but he gets to the point where he's about ready to crap his pants. Bravo! Bravo! <laughs> now, of course, his friends, they pull him up, and he's safe. Bravo! Thanks, Bravo! So Long John Silver and his crew show up, and they're like, hey, y'all are a bunch of stowaways. Long John Silver knows just what to do with stowaways. Now, Ronald McDonald basically tries to explain, oh, you know, you guys don't actually exist. You're in a book. We don't even really belong in your story. And then, of course, Long John Silver says, Ah, a likely story. Well, prepare for a swim, matey. You and your crew are going for a dip in the deep blue sea. This causes a great amount of fear in all the characters. Except for, wait, Birdie can fly. Golly, Ronald! Oh, don't worry, Birdie. A little magic should get us out. Ronald, being the hero that he is, he tries to, uh, Spider-Man himself out of the situation. Obviously, does not work. Oh, that magic scarf should have gone right out of the book. Unless the book cover is closed. Rubble, rubble. Now, lucky for them, Captain Smolik, who runs the ship, actually showed up. What he says now is pretty much all he says for the rest of the movie. I am the captain of the Hispaniola, Mr. Long John Silver. Not you! All right, so they all get off. They do a little introduction thing and then Grimace, you know, he, he's just bouncing, you know, on the board and well, this time he does actually die. Whoa! Mark my words, Ben. That Captain Smollett will soon be taking orders from Long John Silver. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, instead of Grimace dying, Long John Silver dies. Uh, does that mean you like my dive? Sure is my name is Jim Hopkins. <laughs> Almost immediately, they're already best friends with Jim Hopkins. Our new friend, Jim Hopkins, explained that a pirate left a secret treasure map behind when he came to stay at Jim's parents' inn back in England. And then, my friend Squire Trelawney and Dr. Livesey were kind enough to hire the ship and crew so we could go looking for the pirate treasure. Do you want us to help you look for the treasure too? Oh, very much indeed, sir. All right, now they all agree, hey, let's go look for some uh, treasure. Yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, they've been on the ship for a while now. Uh, Grimace and the Hamburglar start to get seasick. Maybe we should all go up in the deck and get some fresh air. I personally don't believe that Grimace actually got seasick. What I'd say is going on is uh, Grimace is going through hamburger withdrawal. It's the easiest explanation because I don't think he'd actually get seasick. This has been a diagnosis from the Dr. Topic One. <sighs> rubble, rubble. Now what happens next is they eavesdrop on Long John Silver basically saying, I'm gonna get rid of the captain. Don't worry, men. We'll soon be taking over this here ship. Can you hear something, Morgan? And then they make a noise, and then everyone starts looking for them. Oops, I forgot to mention that Jim Hopkins makes another noise as well. <sighs> Shiver me timbers. They all proceed to hide in very, very weird spots. Quick, everybody hide! So, like, Ronald McDonald hides in a, a, in a cannon. Grimace hides in one of the spare boats. Someone hides in a thing of apples. Alright, so after that whole entire scuffle, they actually do find land. Uh, land who? Whoa! I bet you that's Treasure Island. Yep, and that's Grimace. Grimace? Oh, Grimace overboard! What's the most reasonable option here? They get another boat, go swim out to him, or they use a scarf. 
Don't worry, Grimace. We're on our way. Oh, don't look down, Hamburglar. Come on, guys. You can do it. Grimace is literally now in fight or flight mode. He's laughing crazy and stuff. Gee, glad you guys could drop in some ride, huh? But regardless, they make it to the island. My friends and I had landed safely on Treasure Island. But meanwhile, things weren't going as well for our young friend Jim Hawkins and his companions. Now, they throw in a little gag while they're narrating what's happening on the boat. I don't know why, but they start playing bowling with Long John Silver's crew. Jim Hawkins and his friends barely escaped, only to find Long John Silver and his pirate crew hot on their heels as both groups reach Treasure Island. Jim somehow gets separated from the rest of his group and is literally running for his life. Keep in mind, this is a child. It's a cartoon, I get it, but like, why? As we tried to find our friend Jim Hawkins, Grimace found something entirely by accident. Uh-oh, my shoelaces are untied. Oh my gosh. Whoa! Why isn't he dead? In this little cave, they find this weird old man who apparently has been on the island for a long time and moved the treasure to another place. So the map isn't even accurate. But he was just a poor sailor who'd been marooned on Treasure Island for three long years. Now this poor old man wants only one thing. Now, all I want is to leave this wretched island. Your map will lead me and my crew to Old Flint's treasure. And if we don't find it, me lad, you'll walk the plank. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present you the greatest wordplay of all time. Thanks to a little magic, we were out of the grotto. But by the time we hit the trail, Long John Silver was long gone. It's so beautiful. Crocodiles? I don't see any crocodiles. Okay, so now they're trying to find Long John Silver and his crew. They take a shortcut through the swamp and they end up in some quicksand. Now we're hopelessly trapped. Now, I'm not even kidding when I say this. They do a flute quartet to get out of it. I've got a sinking feeling that vine's going to need a flute quartet. A one, and a two, and a three, and a four. Blimey, mate. This is no time to be playing around. Little did Ben Gunn know that it was a perfect time for playing if the vines would just play along. Lucky for us, they did. I see it, but I don't believe it. Now after escaping the quicksand, they try to scare Long John Silver and his crew by doing a bunch of ghost noises. And I'm coming for you! Flint doesn't want us to find this treasure! Yeah, for your life! This is the spot where Flint's treasure be buried. But the treasure's gone! Uh, treasure's gone! Treasure's gone! Uh oh, Ronald. Look who's back. Har! So you thought you'd make a fool of Long John Silver, eh? Well, I want that treasure now! But you already have it, Mr. Silver. Don't play games with me, mate! Huh? A gold dove balloon! So you've been holding that on us, you sneaky scoundrel! What? what a sneak! What a sneak! No, no! No, me lads! It's all a trick! Keep away! Keep away! I did it, mate! Gosh, Ronald! Now that we've helped our friends, how are we gonna get off Treasure Island? We've got to hope one of our friends back in McDonald Land finds that closed storybook. Fortunately for them, the captain shows up very conveniently at the end of this and basically just frees them from the book. <laughs> Gosh, Ronald, that old trick really did the trick. Is that supposed to be funny? All she said was that old trick did the trick. It's literally a trick. Johnny Bravo looking hair. What in the world? Goodbye, Jim, and good luck. But what about the treasure, Ronald? Don't you want any? 
No thanks, Jim. We've already got something that's better than treasure. Your friendship. Okay, so what did I think about this? Honestly, I've seen it, you know, once or twice over the past couple years, and every time, it just gets worse. I'm gonna have to give this a two out of five. Now, I know that's a very low score, but the thing is, it doesn't really make sense. These characters do not go in this world at all. Okay, well, I mean, that's pretty much it. There was never any form of a sequel made to this ever. Oh no. Oh, oh no.